How's it going everybody? I'm Steve and welcome back to my channel. So today I decided to do another Criterion haul, but I've decided to do it for my car because it's really nice outside and I haven't done this for a while. So today I actually have three titles to talk about. This, uh, I, I, you know, the first one's brand new, the other two are used, but uh, this first one I've wanted to give for quite a while, but it's uh, released in 1962 from John Frankenheimer. It's uh, spine number 803 and the movie is The Manchurian Candidate. This was, was really great. Uh, it's uh, it's really kind of eerie you know, considering what happened the, the following year you know in political terms you know uh, i won't talk about that so much but uh, if you know the, the major political uh thing that happened the, in 1963 you know this this movie's definitely kind of kind of uh gauges in on that sort of but uh this uh movie's uh, starring frank sinatra it has a uh, janet lee has a uh, lawrence harvey also, it has uh, Angela and Lansbury. She's really great in this. <laughs> apparently, she was only like uh, she's pl she plays the mother of uh, Lawrence Harvey's character, and apparently, she was only like two years older than than he was <laughs> at the time. So, <laughs> but, so that means that, that she looked a lot older than she actually was, and he looked a lot younger than he actually was. But but uh, it's it's really dark, you know, really uh, just a you know political kind of thing. And uh, they they made the actual remake of this with uh, Denzel Washington uh, years later, you know, but. Uh, this is uh, as far as this. Uh, since I only have three titles, I'll just kind of show what's inside. But I've got uh, it's got a poster inside. Really kind of dark there. It also has. Uh, if you've seen the movie, you'll know what this means. You know, <laughs> yeah. It, uh, I, I really love this. So I I gave it four out, four and a half out of five stars. I probably could have given it five stars if I if I watch it again. It might go up to five stars. You know, it's just, it's just really dark. It's just, uh, I love the special features on this. Uh, John Frankenheimer actually did a uh, commentary on this, and this is only a second time I've ever seen a movie from him. He he actually did a, a really great sequel to The French Connection, which I, you know, it's a really kind of dark kind of kind of kind of movie. Have you ever seen The French Connection? I think the the sequel was in like 1975, starring Gene Hackman. He's he's really great, and he, he Hackman obviously won an Oscar before and. Uh, didn't win an Oscar for the sequel, but but I thought for a sequel, John consider John Frankenheimer what he had done already to, to, for him to do a sequel really was kind of special. So I, I thought I think he's a good director. And I, I, he's got other films I want to check out as well. So I, I will definitely at some time in the in the near future. So the second title today actually is one that uh, I I promise I'm going to do more you know, foreign films. So this one's been on my list for a while, and this is obviously there's a huge box set from this director from on the Criterion Collection. And the, the movie is a uh, eight and a half. This is uh, released in 1963, so this is the 60th anniversary of this. This is spine number 140, so it's uh, one of the really early ones. This is uh, definitely a movie that uh, I think film school students are probably required to watch. You know, Fellini is definitely that kind of kind of art art kind of director. That um, I think this is actually his eighth, eighth movie, and they call it eight and a half. But you know, at, uh, at, at the time, it's, it's basically you know about a, a struggling you know, a film director trying to get a project you know, completed and so it's it to me it, it you know on this it actually uh, Terry Gillingham actually does an introduction on this so that uh, he, he he gives eight and a half he puts that in as a top 10 movies so it's definitely a movie that I have to watch over and over to kind of really enjoy and it there's a you know obviously it, it, the box set is like there's like 14 films in the Fellini box set it, it, it's something I, I I didn't want to get the box set I just wanted to see this movie and you know maybe if I really warm up to this movie more maybe I eventually I'll get the box set or I don't know but but uh, I, I learned a lot you know basically this movie definitely has a lot of visuals in it and so it's it's kind of difficult to watch you know look at the subtitles when you're trying to look the the great visuals in it and you know it's a I think it and basically after I watched the commentary on this I it made so much more sense you know, the people that do the commentary you know pointed out so many things that I missed in the movie because it's just there's so much to take in with all the subtitles that you, you miss so much, but uh, you know, I enjoyed it more watching the commentary. Like I said, I, I'll have to watch this movie, you know, several more times to really kind of get it, you know, but, but uh, I definitely see where, where, where film students definitely have learned a lot from this movie. So it's, it's, it's not necessarily, it's more art than entertainment. Yeah. You know, it's, it's basically a comedy, you know, but, uh, you, you, you know, you, you may not catch that if you're looking at subtitles, but, uh, but the, there's some great visuals in this movie, uh, as far as the inside of it though, I look at the if you've seen the movie you know what this this platform is uh it says a uh, the star of the movie is a uh, marcello mastriani and the, he's a uh, that's him there you know it's a lot lots of great visuals in this you know once you see the movie you'll you'll 
you'll, you'll, you'll know what all this stuff means, but, you know, Fellini is definitely considered to be one of the great directors. Uh, a lot of, a lot of the uh, film directors that you love, especially American directors, all talk about Fellini, how, how great he was. I think, you know, at, uh, at William Freakin, I think he did like a, a Criterion Closet, uh, you know, episode and he he said eight and a half was one of his top movies he, he took the movie uh you know where, where they they get celebrities and they're, they're able to, to pick from the closet from me you know, on the criterion closet where they can pick their own movies and so it's definitely uh, one that he picked up uh, so you know a lot of film directors will say this movie's like one of the best movies they've ever seen so uh you know i, I like i said i'll have to watch it you know some more to really appreciate it more just because you're taking in so much as you're as you're watching it and so um, yeah, it's just, just, um, yeah, it, it's something I, I would say, I, I don't know if I would highly recommend it to somebody that's not, not, uh, highly into film or, or, you know, a film student that those, those are the, the, the kind of fans that would definitely get into this more than just a, a than a, a casual, you know, movie fan, you know, but uh, it, it's definitely something you have to check out. I think, I think regardless of where you see it, uh, you definitely need to check it out though it's, it's just it, it's a must viewing for anybody it's a, a huge film fan you'll see so many things in this movie that 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 so many directors years later definitely took from from Fellini so uh you know like I said I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to watch it some more to really kind of enjoy it more and, and as I see it as I ever read the subtitles I'll I'll get it more so I'll I'll keep trying though so, so we'll see how that goes in the future so the third and final film was actually one I've heard Cinema Dave Media talk about before, and I've wanted to see it for, for you know for a little while now. It was released in 2021 originally, and the movie is The Velvet Underground. This is a this movie was a I think it was produced by Apple TV. It may may have been shown on Apple TV Plus originally, and it's a you know directed by Todd Haynes. It's a spy number 1164. Uh, th this movie it was, it was kind of disappointing because they don't really have a lot of costume footage from from this band. And they don't really have a lot of interviews from the band either. So the, the, the movie's kind of mixing in a lot of like visuals and there's just not, not really enough to, to really talk about uh, in the movie. And, it's a, and it stretches out for like two hours. So it's a little bit too long, I think. But, but there's some stuff, really st great, great stuff in it though. I, you know, I, I liked Lou Reed quite a bit. The first album from this band was actually kind of an art house kind of music. You know, it, it was a, you know, credited to Andy Warhol as being the, the producer of the album, even though he was, he was just a, just an artist uh he, he he's a big part of the new york scene at the time and uh you know so he he, get, he got credit for the you know for 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 producing the album you know i think he people have said he basically just hit record and but warhol is really the reason why this album their debut album was actually made because he had that kind of influence in new york and so he, he got them got them like a record contract and you know he's really responsible for it but so two things on this that I really liked, uh, you know, there's a, there's an art, a musician named Jonathan Richmond that he was a big fan of the Velvet Underground. I think he said he saw them when he was like 16. I actually saw him live. He's a huge fan. I think he's in his like early 70s now, but I, I know him best from uh, the movie. There's something about Mary. He actually did like like a one or two songs from that. And he's actually in the movie quite a bit. Uh, I, I, I'll show the image of what he is, but if you've ever seen that movie, I think his character. Uh, something really funny happens at the end of it it's just a it's a but he, he does a, a great song in there about you know about mary and that but he was really hugely influenced by the by the band he learned how to play guitar i think john john kale was one person in the band and uh and another guitar player in the band that actually showed him how to, uh, how to play chords that kind of thing so he he gives a lot of credit to this band and he gives and there's actually an interview on this where he he says something really really uh really how how much he was you know touched by by the by the music from this band you know and how influential he was and, and like without this band he wouldn't he wouldn't have a career basically you know it was his big inspiration at the time so it, it's really heartfelt what he says in it and, uh, and there's also a, a, a actress named mary warrenov I believe, I believe her name is have you ever seen the movie uh, rock and roll high school she i guess she was a big fan of the Velvet underground uh, she was also in Death Race 2000. <laughs> Great character. She worked with, uh, you know, Roger Corman quite a bit at the time. But she she's an actress, and uh, she says some really great things. And uh, she she's in the movie, and she they actually have a, a separate bonus track where she gives like a like 15 minute interview and talks about the band. So she's really great in it. So so it's, some of the supporting cast are actually what really made this made this a little more enjoyable than than it probably should have been. You know. So unfortunately, Lou Reed actually passed away in 2013, so he wasn't around to actually do the uh, 
any kind of uh, interviews for this movie you know, so it, it was kind of missing that part of it and he, he was a huge part of the band uh, for he kept the band going for for i don't know four or five years or so but but as far as the uh inside booklet here this is kind of the poster inside and uh you know i really enjoyed the the commentary on this I, the commentary was actually made it much better um enjoyed that it actually has has a, a long interview inside of it as well you know so so you know I, I don't know i think if you're a fan of this band i think this would be worth picking up uh, you know but uh, if you're just you're know, collecting criterions uh, maybe if, if you're collecting all the criterions you know obviously you got to get it but but I, I don't know if it would be a movie that, that that everybody would like you know if, if you if you like the music from this band you know maybe, maybe you would like it but you know I'd, I couldn't highly recommend it to everybody, but uh, I, I I enjoyed it for what it was, you know. But it, it it wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be. So, but that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel and please put a thumbs up on this video. That would help my channel out a lot, <laughs> a whole lot. You know, just getting a, a thumbs up would make such a huge difference. And uh, yeah, have a good night. Thank you.